Hi everyone, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna discuss about black rot. This is one of the fiercest orchid diseases you can have because it moves very, very fast and you need to take action right away. I have been inspired to make this video because I recently watched a video from Maria Young and I'll post it on the screen right now so you can watch it too. She actually had a case of black rot and sadly the orchid could not be saved. A while back I also had some discussions with my viewer John Benedict and I'll also add his link on the screen so you can visit him. He was saying that when he gets black rot he needs to chop away at the orchid and sometimes the infection comes back and he needs to chop and chop again. So you can see how bad this disease can be. I've actually seen black rot once on my friend's orchid, but luckily the orchid was saved. So I will tell you today what we did to save the orchid, make a sort of a tutorial out of it, and also share the story with all of you guys. Now black rot pretty much looks like it sounds. The symptoms are blackening of the tissues, whether it's leaves or pseudobulbs. The rotted tissue looks almost black. It's not brownish, it's not yellowish, it's almost black. Now this thing spreads so fast that the effect is visible from day to day, so you need to act really, really fast. I'll add a link in the description of this video towards an article from the AOS on black rot, so you'll learn more about it. Now two years ago, me and my friend Cora made a joined order at Schwerter, and she actually ordered a beautiful Catlia Siamese doll kiwi. Now a few days after the order arrived, she observed on the leaves and on the pseudobulbs of her orchid this black formation and from day to day it kept getting really really bad. More and more of the tissues were affected. So at the time I wrote Schwerter and actually they suggested the plant is about to die, so they refunded us the money. Now I actually told my friend, you know what, let's try to save it. Why not? Let's see if it works. So here comes the tutorial part of this video. I'll tell you the steps you need to take, the ones that I told my friend as well, and she managed to save her orchid. First step, isolate your orchid. If you have a spare room in which you can place a plant, put it there. If you don't have a spare room, just make sure your plant is really far from the other plants you might have. This disease can actually spread if orchids touch each other. Or worse, if you have water dripping from an affected plant onto a healthy plant, it might infect it. So first step, make sure your infected orchid is very far away from your other plants. Step number two, go to your local human pharmacy and look for hydrogen peroxide 3%. Now, depends on your language and on your country, the hydrogen peroxide might be called something like oxygenated water. It's the same thing. All you need to do is look for the 3% concentration. The chemical formula for this substance is H2O2, so it's practically water with one added oxygen atom. This substance is not toxic for you or the environment, so don't worry, but do get the 3% concentration. Higher than this can actually affect your plants or even yourself, but in a human pharmacy, you'll probably not find anything else rather than 3% or 6%. Step number three unpot the orchid from its original media and its original pot. You want to get rid of the old media because water dripping down from the plant might have let the fungus spores inside the media, so you need to get rid of it and actually use fresh media. If you intend to reuse the pot, wash it very, very well. I would suggest a bleach solution. You know how you have those sprays for the bathroom? Those are perfect. They have bleach, they disinfect, they're actually really good. So clean the orchid's roots as best as you can. Try to not let any piece of the old media stay in between the roots. Cut away the dead roots if your orchid has dead roots and so on. Step number four. Get a sharp scissors and sterilize it. You can sterilize it with bleach, you can sterilize it with alcohol, and you can even flame it. The main idea is that if you ever used this particular scissors with other orchids or other plants, it's good to sterilize it as best as you can. Step 5. It's time to chop your orchid. Now whatever surface has black patches needs to go away. So let's presume you have a black patch right here on the leaf on the tip. You need to cut this tip. Don't cut in between or in the middle of the blackened area. Cut way below it into healthy tissue. If you have a whole leaf blackened, you kind of need to cut from the pseudobulb as well a little lower. 
if you have a suitable blackened you can cut it from the middle or something depends how much it's infected or if the majority of the pseudobulb is blackened and infected just cut it all together if you have multiple pseudobulbs affected just cut the rhizome as close to the healthy pseudobulb that you still have as possible the bottom line is that you need to cut everything that is black and you need to cut into healthy tissue even if you're gonna massacre the orchid there's no other choice trust me cut everything that is black step six pour the hydrogen peroxide into a spray bottle or into a bowl if your hydrogen peroxide is in a spray bottle spray the heck out of the orchid roots rhizomes pseudobulbs leaves underside of the leaves joints everything needs to be sprayed as thoroughly as possible if your orchid is pretty tiny just submerge the orchid into the bowl of hydrogen peroxide everything every nook and cranny needs to be touched by the hydrogen peroxide what this will do is kill off the remaining spores that the fungus left behind and actually hydrogen peroxide is extremely good at doing this people actually use it when they want to sterilize orchid seeds they either use bleach or hydrogen peroxide it is that efficient so whether you sprayed your entire orchid with hydrogen peroxide or dipped it into a bowl of hydrogen peroxide for a few seconds pull it out and put it on a separate tray your orchid might fizz you might hear a sound that's normal don't freak out just let it sit there and fizz for about 10 minutes after about 10 minutes the reaction will be over and what you will have left is just water and oxygen which actually evaporated remember hydrogen peroxide it's h2o2 all you're gonna be left with is water h2o step seven you need to dry your plant and actually keep it dry for this i like to use a fan i just place it in front of a fan and let it sit there for 30 minutes to an hour and everything is pretty dry step eight pot your orchid into fresh media and a clean pot whether you like to use the old pot or a brand new pot it doesn't matter as long as they're very clean step nine maintenance you still need to keep this orchid separate from your other plants because you don't know if the infection has really gone away so it's actually better to keep it separate for a while in the maintenance time you need to keep this orchid as dry as possible because she's kind of weak now from all that cutting so she is prone to actually getting reinfected maybe with other diseases high humidity in this case i think it will do worse than good also in the maintenance step you can actually seal off the cut wounds with cinnamon powder and I do have a video on how to properly use cinnamon powder I'll add it in an info card right there so you can learn more so if you have cut leaves you can actually place a little bit of cinnamon powder never on the roots though because cinnamon dehydrates and you can have some serious trouble if you place cinnamon on the root system also in the maintenance phase you need to care for your orchid normally give it bright light but not direct sunshine depending on what your orchid requires also water it irregularly but do keep it as dry as possible when it comes to the surface components of your orchid also keep it ventilated this will prevent spores from developing and actually reinfecting your orchid so keep in mind your orchid is a little bit weaker than most other orchids but you know what this can actually work and i'll show you an email that my friend sent me one year after i told her what to do to try to save it and i tried a little google translation there it doesn't look too pretty but you get the idea her orchid was actually bouncing back and this year it actually bloomed and it looks spectacular it looked so pretty that i actually ordered one for myself as well the siamese doll kiwi is a wonderful orchid now keep in mind that this will not work 100% all the time. Some orchids might already be very weak. Some orchids might already be very, very infected, depending how fast you spotted the problem. And sometimes you might not do a good job with your orchid. You might not pay that much attention to detail. Maybe you don't have enough experience but it is well worth trying to save it. So I hope this will be useful to you. I really hope you will never have to deal with black rot, but in case you ever do, give this a try and let me know how it goes for you. I really hope it will do okay. So thank you for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and a share. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchid videos and also feel free to leave me additional questions or suggestions for videos in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. 
If you click on the left side of your screen, you'll be directed to workinnature.com, where you'll find care sheets, identification sheets, and also you can talk to us in the forum section. And on the right side of your screen, you can click to watch another Orchid video. Thank you for joining. I'll see you next time. Bye!